All righty. Uh, my name is Kristen Minnick. I am the Montana Teacher Residency Program Coordinator at UM Western. A little bit about me is that I grew up in Helena, Montana. I moved to Dillon about eight years ago to get my uh, elementary degree at UM Western. I ended up getting my master's degree in reading from Grand Canyon University a couple of years later in 2022. Uh, and I worked at the local middle school for a few years before I got this position. Uh, and I became the residency coordinator in January. So I'm a little new to this, but I'm very excited. I've been learning lots of things about it and I'm very excited to share it with all of you tonight as well. Um, first and foremost, I have a little Mentimeter that I'm gonna have you guys participate in with me. So I'm going to share my screen for that. All right, you can either on your phone or if you have a computer, you can go to mentimeter.com and enter in the code. Or if you have your phone, you can scan the QR code for the Mentimeter. Leave that up for just a minute before I move on to our next slide. All righty, go ahead and move on to that next one. You can still look at the top there. It has the join at Mentimeter and the login code in case you missed it. Um, so have you heard about the Montana Teacher Residency Program? Yes, a little bit, or no? Perfect. Awesome. I get some of you that I get to explain the program. C completely new. That's awesome. Some of you guys have already heard about it. And Looks like most of you have just heard of it, <laughs> so, which is totally fine. All right, my next question is, what is your role? Are you a college student? Are you a teacher, principal, or district superintendent? Do you work in our public schools? Um, are you part of an EPP, or are you something else? Fantastic. Perfect. Got a good mix here, people. Then I'm glad to see that we have a bunch of college students on here. Obviously, this is most important for you all. All right, next one is what are you hoping to gain out of this open house? This is a little open question. So you can put what you are looking to hopefully learn. Um, or if you are just here to, if you've never heard of it and you're just here to figure out what it is, that's great too. I just want to hear from you all. Wonderful. Learning more. Becoming a resident, just learning more. Hosting, fantastic. Ooh, where the program is, program details, perfect, becoming a resident. Leave it for just a few more seconds here in case other people want to answer or join in. All righty, perfect. Well, it gives me a better idea then of what you guys were expecting to get out of this, which it seems like what we'll be talking about is what you're expecting, <laughs> which is good news. So let me go ahead and pull up this other slideshow now I have for us. Okay. 
me. Oh, all right, let's see. All right, just to double check, Crystal, I'm gonna have you unmute just cause I can't uh, see the screen now, but can you guys see the, res the Montana Teacher Residency Program slide? Yeah, Kirsten, we can, and it, it looks great. Thank you. Perfect, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, so we uh, have this presentation now. It's the Montana Teacher Residency Program, which is what you've all come here before. Um, in case you missed it just in the beginning, once again, my name is Kirsten Minnick. I'm the Residency Program Coordinator at UM Western. I've lived in Montana my whole life. I was a teacher for a few years at our local middle school, and now I'm doing this, and I'm having a lot of fun figuring out this program, and I'm really excited to share it with you all. So, uh, just in general, what is the residency program and what are the goals of the residency? So our residency program is an alternative to traditional student teaching where residents or student teachers are placed in a school for a in one entire school year instead of just a few weeks so they can get more experience out of it, um, learn more about what it's like to be teaching in a school. And on top of that, and most excitingly, is that our residents are paid every month for being in this program. They get a monthly stipend. Uh, they also are eligible for tuition scholarships and they'll get housing assistance. We'll talk about more of that here in a little bit. <laughs> our goals of this program is just to help increase um, our teachers that we have in Montana and our teacher retention. Times are hard. There's teacher shortages everywhere. And this is an opportunity that we have to help encourage students to become teachers and also give them an opportunity to uh, not have to worry as much about finances during student teaching. I know that that can be very difficult. Um, and this also, this program we're hoping to can help increase our teacher retention because you're going to get more experience. You'll be um, better suited for um, teaching when you get into your own classroom by just having extra guidance and being in there for an entire year. All right, this next slide, I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen for just a second here. <laughs> Um, before I go on to this next screen that I have, I really would like to introduce uh, Crystal Smith. She is our program manager at OPI. Crystal, I'll let you go ahead and take it away. Good evening and thank you, Kristen. Um, so as Kristen said, my name is Crystal Smith. Uh, my official title at the OPI is uh, Education Innovation Manager. And one of the initiatives that I oversee is the residency program. Um, Kirsten, if you want to go ahead and throw that slide back up um, to talk about the, the partnership that we have with Montana Western, that would be uh, be fabulous. So um, similar to Kirsten, I was a classroom teacher, um, born and raised in Montana, um, ended up graduating from the University of Montana, um, went to Nevada because at that point it was very difficult to get a teaching job as a first year teacher in the state of Montana. I applied, wanted to stay in the Flathead Valley where I was from, and I can remember um, the applicant pool for a fourth grade teacher at Evergreen um, Elementary School was like 35 applicants for one position. Um, so at that point, Nevada was looking for teachers, um, offering a pretty good bonus to uh, relocate. And I went and taught there for 10 years. Had a great opportunity, loved teaching, um, loved the profession, and then um, actually wanted to pursue becoming a college basketball coach. So I had the opportunity to come back to Montana Um served as the assistant women's basketball coach at the University of Providence for five years, and then um, slowly made my way to the OPI when um, my mom life was more important than my coaching life. So um, the model that we have here um, is that we facilitate through the OPI is that the OPI um, has used ESSER dollars for the last uh, two years to fund the residency program, moving into fiscal year 25, so beginning July 1st of 2024. Um, House Bill 833 has been um, signed into legislation that will go um, forth to fund the residency program moving forward. So um, part of that funding is to provide an FTE to help support the program from um, the recruiting and the financial side of things. So the OPI is partnered with Montana Western um, to so serve as this hub and spoke model where Montana Western really is working on recruiting students um, this is a model from this current year. So we have um, a student from Montana Northern. Um, a, we have two or three students from uh, Montana State. 
And then we have the majority of our students coming from um, Montana Western, but um, wrote into legislation for this 24-25 school year. Uh, we will accept any students who are currently going through an EPP um, that is accredited or viewed as equivalent by the Board of Public Education um, to be a part of the residency program. So Kirsten and her responsibilities are the finance, the recruiting of students. What I do on the OPI side is really work with the district. So I put in the chat um, a a link to a Google form that really helps districts identify what are the key elements and responsibilities on their behalf um, of participating in the residency program and then a great way to communicate with me if you are interested and have um, some of the pieces in place to be qualified to host a resident um, in the 24-25 school year. So that's really how this partnership works. I also help support out-of-state um, EPP. So if you have uh, maybe parapros that are working in school districts or in your school district um, or community members that you know might be going through, I think Kirsten said she uh, went through Grand Canyon, but we've had um, several different out-of-state EPPs look at this model and, and be close to being ready to, to join us. So if you have folks that might be interested in um, residency that will be in their fourth and final year um, of their undergrad um, coursework that obviously would be offered online because they are going through an out-of-state EPP, um, I would help work with the placement of those students as well. So um, Kirsten, I will throw it back to you. Perfect. All right, right after this here, we have this wonderful video. Do you want to uh, introduce the video a little bit? I will. So um, back in, I believe, October of last year, we were contacted by the U.S. Department of Education um, as our residency demonstration in Montana was selected as one of the best practices uh, nationwide for the best practices clearinghouse. So with our partnership from the um, Ed Northwest Comp Center that helps support a lot of initiatives work in Montana and um, through the OPI, we were selected for this, this program. Um, our team went to Great Falls, to Vaughn, and to Browning, uh, interviewed district leaders, residents, um, and community members to really help portray what the residency program is as a best practice for improving retention and recruitment of teachers, um, not only in Montana, but nationwide, as there's a lot of eyes on, on what we're doing here, um, and then try to help recruit those who might be interested moving forward. So um, without further ado, Kristen, I will let the um, video speak for itself. Oh, I just want to say one more thing. It is in its first cut. Um, they are still working at uh, the Department of Ed to make the final revision. So um, you will see the final version coming out here, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. We're hoping to have it tonight for you, but um, this is a rough, <laughs> a rough version of the final product, but still very speaks well about um, the residency program. Thank you. Kirsten, you might want to turn the volume up on your side. I know I'm having a hard time hearing it. Others Perfect. might be. Volume down? Is it, re is it echoing? No, vo volume up. There's oh, volume be up. audio with that piece. Interesting. Okay. Let me turn it up all the way. I just I'm hoping it won't echo. We'll try again. <laughs> Yeah, Kirsten, I don't think um, others can hear it as well. What was that? Uh, I don't <sighs> think others can hear it as well through. Okay. I need to go through the, um, your mute. Let me. Aha, okay, one second. Okay, figured it out. <laughs> 
<laughs> now you all should be able to hear it. One second here. Let me try again. America's future has changed. Every aspect of society, including education, has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. In-person learning was halted and entire communities were affected. As we continue recovering from the impact, education practitioners are finding new, creative solutions to help students achieve academic excellence, boldly improve learning conditions, and create pathways for global engagement. Journey with the Best Practices Clearinghouse as we focus on the field to showcase innovative implementation stories and best practices that a diverse set of education practitioners across the country are doing to raise the bar in education. These innovators will share strategies, lessons learned, and hopefully inspire you on your own journey towards recovery. These are their stories. As we focus on the field, we travel to Montana and the Montana Teacher Residency Demonstration Project. The initiative, through a key partnership between the Montana Office of Public Instruction, or OPI, and the Region 17 Comprehensive Center, was launched to address teacher shortages. All across the state of Montana, students are experiencing a shortage of highly qualified, effective teachers. Even before the pandemic, Montana schools were struggling to find qualified applicants for open teaching positions, especially in rural and tribal communities. Even on the road to recovery from the pandemic, the percentage of educator positions that were difficult to fill has continued to increase from 45% in 2018 to 70% in 2022. This shortage threatens the quality and stability of education offered to Montana students. Back in the fall of 21, we were trying to figure out some ways to begin addressing the shortages that we were seeing in teachers, in particular in our rural schools in Montana and in our reservations. And we were also thinking about what were some um, innovative ways that we could really build up our teachers so that they'd be ready on day one when they hit the classrooms. The residency program seems to be something that other states have used. So we did what great educators do. We copied individuals and what individual states had done in this model. But we made it a Montana frame. We created think tanks from teachers, educational leaders, legislators, folks from our Office of Public Instruction, community members to, to come together and, and say, you know, what, what would be the best model for our residency program and what do we need to do to ensure that it meets the needs of all of our stakeholders. The Montana OPI worked with the Region 17 Comprehensive Center to lay the foundation for the residency program. The vision for the program was for prospective teachers to earn their degrees develop instructional skills, and create lasting connections in communities across the state. So we worked with so many different stakeholders. Started, of course, with teachers, making sure that teachers are recognized. We went to parents. We went to student organizations. We went to our school leaders. We made sure that uh, the post-secondary folks also recognized who we were. And then, of course, to our tribal governments having them understand that if we're building a process that every student in Montana has an opportunity to learn that's guaranteed by our Constitution, all are so important at the table. Now in full implementation, the Montana Teacher Residency Demonstration Project has five key stakeholders. In each of these different five stakeholders have different roles and responsibilities to ensure that the demonstration is a success. The first stakeholder group is the resident teachers or innovators who are typically undergraduate students taking online courses in an educator prep program and who need to fulfill their student teaching requirements. These resident innovators are matched to a Montana school and receive one year of professional development and classroom experience. Montana educator prep programs in our state are used to help recruit the resident teachers as well as support them throughout this year-long student teaching model. The second stakeholder group consists of educator preparation programs. 
Montana educator prep programs in our state are used to help recruit um, the resident teachers as well as support them throughout this year-long student teaching model. Next, school districts support the project by providing the residents with housing assistance to support their placement and funding for teacher leaders to attend professional development opportunities. The fourth stakeholder group consists of the teacher leaders. These master teachers participate in the Montana OPI Teacher Leader Academy and receive a stipend for coaching a resident for the year. In this full year student teaching model, the lead teacher also is required to support, mentor, and guide the resident teacher for the year-long residency. Finally, the Montana OPI recruits districts to participate, provides the stipends to the residents and teacher leaders, helps match residents to districts, and offers high-quality professional learning and networking opportunities to residents and teacher leaders in each cohort. We are currently in our second year of the Montana Teacher Residency Program. In the first cohort, we had 17 successful candidates complete their year-long residency, serving in 10 Montana teaching districts. In the second year, we currently have 23 undergraduate and graduate students working and serving in 17 districts throughout the state of Montana. The Montana OPI developed and sustained key partnerships for the Teacher Residency Demonstration Project that have helped increase the program's impact, including partnerships with the Montana University System to discuss resident recruitment and with legislators to secure long-term funding for the program once federal COVID relief funds expire. We coordinate with universities to get students who may be interested in the residency. We coordinate with students at our university to make sure they have the correct coursework. Uh, and then we work in conjunction with OPI to make sure that we have districts that are willing to take students on for the specific endorsements that they are seeking uh, as they work through their student teaching experience. That first year, we were really monitoring and doing lots of surveys and really trying to get a sense of the project. Through that, we were able to then utilize that data and those stories to go to the legislator body and say, this is something that we feel like should actually be sustained and move forward in more of a permanent model. They were so excited to see the data and the stories and the success of what we had in that first year that they made the decision to fund the program permanently moving forward. While the program has experienced great success, it has not been without challenges. OPI staff have used an iterative process to adjust the program based on stakeholder feedback, which has included recognizing and responding to the needs of resident teachers and school districts. I think the biggest challenge we've had with the residency program is that we have such a need for teachers. That's been very difficult to, to balance the need of the resident to be able to grow so that they can be successful on day one and honor the time and the experience that they need while also addressing that we need people in our classrooms immediately. Looking ahead, the Montana OPI is continuing to gather feedback and work with the Region 17 Comprehensive Center to develop tools to evaluate the program, identifying clear goals and benchmarks to measure success. They send out surveys, host interviews, host focus groups so that they can come together and really look at and figure out how is it working. And then we're following them afterwards because one of the commitments with our residents is that they get this year paid for in a commitment back is to do two years in a Montana classroom somewhere. And so we're also following the first year cohort. There have been several successful outcomes of our Montana teacher residency program, but I would say that the number one success is that our teachers are able to financially benefit during their student teaching experience, as well as have quality mentorship, leadership, and guidance to see what a full year entails as a classroom teacher. A lot of our non-traditional students who are balancing work life and we're really worried about the financial aspects of student teaching. Having this option where they are able to afford to student teach is enabling people who in some cases may have gotten to the finish line and not been able to do their student teaching to do that. And it also enables people that are non-traditional students that may already be working in schools to have a leg up to where they can continue working in their own environment. What do the participants have to say about the impacts of the Montana Teacher Residency Demonstration Project? The five teachers that were teacher residents last year now are teachers and 
they hit the ground running. They know the classroom management. They, they know everything about our district and how we started and how we end. And it's, it's pretty seamless. There are very little cons and a whole lot of pros. And the best pro about this whole thing is that our kids get the best teachers possible. It's a win-win situation for all involved, for the mentor teacher, gaining professional development, refining and reflecting on their own practices, and then also giving to future teacher candidates. There's nothing that beats on the job intensive training. And that's really what this is, is that intensive training so that they're ready. And you know, we're producing high quality first year teachers. Giving student teachers splash of six, eight, 10 week programs, be in your community, that isn't long enough for them to experience your school, let alone the whole community and know what it has to offer for them, maybe their future family, their future life experience. Having them here for a year, they get to understand not only the school, but the community. And they're also building friendships along the way and relationships that make them wanna stay. When I decided to be part of the teacher program, I thought of my personal experience. When I had my residence last year, she started the year with me and the students and ended it. And see, I didn't get that experience. I was just thrown in the classroom and handed a manual and I was like... I just thought how amazing it would have been to have an entire year in a program with master teachers would be, I don't think you can get anything better and more valuable for your education. That's why I wanted to do this was to give that teacher what I didn't get. I like things done and my classroom runs a certain way and it has really pushed me to give that control over to the resident in my classroom because if I don't do that then she's not going to get the full experience of what it's like to be a teacher. That was the hardest part for me but it's also been the best part because I've got to watch her go from somebody who was not sure to somebody who was very confident. She had me as like a guide to help her and we eased her into it. I didn't just say, you're going to teach today. I allowed her to sit back for the first maybe quarter. She took notes and watched how I did calendar, watched how I did math and my ma classroom management. And then I slowly gave her a content area. She would look to me and I would guide her as she taught or after we would talk about different ideas or different strategies that may help the students. I thought it, it's, it's a good way to give back, I guess. I had a great teacher that I worked with when I student taught years ago and this was my way to impart any knowledge I might have onto somebody else or you know give them a leg up where they can. Satisfying thing for me to have a resident in my classroom is watch that my resident grow. The confidence in how they deliver the instruction and how they're building the relationships with the students and just the overall confidence from day one to now, it's night and day. I think one of the benefits that I love about it is that I am able to be with the students from, get, from, the, from the beginning to the end and see their progress throughout the entire year. We get paid student teaching. It's going to put us in a better financial place. And we don't have to worry about holding another job, focusing on student teaching and all of our classes on top of that. I think as far as growth, personally, I have learned to be more patient with my students, definitely more compassionate towards them and the parents as well. I've experienced a variety of behaviors, so I've had to tailor my instruction to meet their needs and make sure that they can be successful learners. I really didn't think of being a role model until I stepped into the classroom. You're thinking of all this stuff like strategies, skills, remember the lesson, you know, not be nervous and teaching a lesson. But, and then all of a sudden you have a student come up to you, you know, and uh, telling you like, hey, you helped me or, you know, guess what I did last night, you know, or, you know, I, I know you. My dad knows you, you know, and then it starts sinking into you that, yeah, it's another thing that you are a role model. The transition for me from becoming a resident teacher into a full-time teacher was a very smooth transition. I will say it's still very hard. This first year is very hard, 
but without the residency program, I don't even I don't even want to imagine how this year would be. I think I would be very lost. I don't think I would know what I was doing. So I'm very grateful for the program. All across Montana, the Montana Teacher Residency Project is effectively engaging teachers, improving educator diversity, and strengthening educator pipelines, all while building upon a legacy of generations of inspired and passionate educators. I've been here for 25 years, taught here for 22, three years as my as an administrator. I even did my student teaching here. So my entire entire teaching career, education career will be at Vaughn, and when I leave, I'll leave as a wildcat. One of the residency students was from Vaughn, and uh, she actually was a student here. I was her teacher. My mother was a teacher for 30 years. My grandmother was a teacher for 35 years. And so teaching is just in my blood. <laughs> I feel like it's just in me. We don't say, I love you in my class. I teach my kids how to say, which means I love you in Blackfeet. So when, we, when they say I love you to me, it's in our language. And that is another thing that I love about the residency program is the fact that it's brought so many Indigenous educators back home on our res, teaching these kids. I'm, I'm lucky to have such amazing mentor teachers and a great experience. Um, I love every single one of those kids and it just expands my passion for why I want to become a teacher. We didn't want to take the emotion out of this because being a teacher is an emotional, it's an emotional job. In other words, your heart's in it. So we wanted to make sure that it's not just purely numbers, but we're recognizing the people's voices that are here. Montana OPI's Creative Montana Teacher Residency Demonstration Project is helping uplift the teaching profession and build the next generation of educators. This program is a prime example of the innovation needed to inspire others to think outside the box, to raise the bar, and lead the world. The U.S. Department of Education is committed to supporting states, districts, and schools in advancing these key focus areas, achieving academic excellence, boldly improving learning conditions, and creating pathways for global engagement. The Safer Schools and Campuses Best Practice Clearinghouse is operated by Synergy Go ahead and pause that there now. Alrighty, so our video, that video, thank you very much for sharing that video with me too there, Crystal. It's fantastic. And I think it has some great, great information in it too. and does a good job kind of giving us an overview. Um, so moving uh, from that then now too, I just want to go over what the residency is like versus traditional student teaching, kind of what our main big, this biggest differences are. Um, so we have our residency is on the left hand side of this slide here, for traditional student teaching is on the right. So the residency is first of all, it's a year long student teaching. Um, traditional student teaching generally is 12 to 16 weeks. It is going to depend on your university and your degrees, of course. Um, on the residency, you get monetary benefits. So our students that are in the residency will receive 10 monthly stipends of $1,400. They also are eligible to receive up to a $3,000 tuition scholarship. Um, and they also receive some form of housing assistance. The housing assistance can vary, but it just depends on what the district is able to offer and also what the resident needs. Um, and that is something that is decided between the resident and the district. Um, the residency also, you get to finish your last year of classes online while you're student teaching. With this, we guarantee the residents 20% time off to work on their coursework. So if you're in a traditional Monday through Friday school schedule, you would get one day off a week to then work on your classwork that you have. Um, of course, you're going to have extended classroom experience uh, under your teacher leader just because you're going to be in the classroom for an entire year. Uh, the main and then <laughs> lastly, one of the big main things with the residency is that you are required to teach in Montana um, after you complete the residency for three years. You do have five years to complete that within. So there's a bit of wiggle room. It doesn't have to happen immediately. But that is a stipulation that we have with the residency program as well. Traditional student teaching, like I mentioned before, is quite a bit shorter. <laughs> you can go over just one semester. 
There's no monetary benefit that we have uh, available for traditional student teaching. There, uh, you're going to gain experience, of course, from your mentor teacher. It just isn't going to be for quite as long. Um, with traditional student teaching, you also have an opportunity to teach uh, out of state or even potentially out of country. Our uh, residency program is for just Montana schools and Montana school districts. Uh, and then lastly, for traditional student teaching, there is not a requirement to teach afterwards as well. Let's see if it'll work for me. There we go. All righty. Uh, so benefits of residents. We talked about this a little bit on the last slide, of course, as well. But monetary advantages, you're going to get paid to be in the residency program. Again, you're going to get a longer experience in this uh, student teaching model that we have. Uh, you're going to be able to see what your students are like at the beginning of the year when they're still kind of shy and figuring out what's happening in the classroom to the very end of the year when they cannot wait to get out of there and summer is around the corner. <laughs> you're going to be able to see all of these different uh, uh, reactions from your students. <laughs> you also are going to be able to hopefully uh, go see like some of the plays that they have or their games. You, you just will have more opportunities to go to your students' events during the school year and connect with the community more as well. Uh, and then lastly, like uh, building off of that, you're going to make more connections. You're going to be in that school for an entire year. So you're going to get to know the faculty much more at that school and have to work with them during that entire year. Uh, you also are going to learn your community more as well, just being in that school district for that long. You're going to be more involved. We have benefits then for our teacher leaders and districts. Teacher leaders, when you host a resident, you receive a $6,000 stipend that's paid in over two increments. Uh, of course, you're going to have increased classroom support. Just having a resident there in your class for that entire school year is just an extra set of hands that can help you with whatever tasks. And then, of course, they'll be taken over. Um, our residents also are eligible to substitute for their teacher leader up to five days during the residency. That's also the same for traditional student teaching, with the main difference, however, being that resident student teachers do not get to get paid for that substituting because they're already getting um, those other monetary advantages through our program. Um, districts, this also gives you a wonderful opportunity to uh, seek out profession or potential future employees. You're going to take that entire year to see how it is that they react in the classroom, how they are in the community. Of course, you get to do this with traditional student teaching as well, but this is going to give you a much better idea of what that student will be like as a teacher when they're there for that entire school year. All right, we actually saw this uh, graph a little bit here in the video as well, but these are each of the different roles on each of the different parties that we have uh, within the program. So we have our resident innovators is the blue little part of the circle there. I'm going to start with them. These, of course, are our student teachers in the program. Their main job is to learn what it's like to be in the classroom during that time. We have OPI up at the top, our Office of Public Instruction. They're our main um, uh, initiators of this program and administrators of it, of course, as well. We work very closely with them here at UM Western for this program. They help facilitate it. Uh, then we have in gray our teacher leaders. These, of course, are our mentors for our residents while they are in the program. Um, I did have a, I saw in the chat we had a question earlier, and I'm just going to answer it for everybody right now, too. But your teacher leader will align with whatever uh, degree it is that you're seeking. So if you're an elementary uh, ed student, then you'll be with an elementary ed teacher, your teacher leader. It'll align in that sense. If you're a secondary uh, English major, then you'll be with an English teacher then too. Our district partners there are in green. Those, of course, are our schools that are hosting our residents. None of this would be able to happen without you at all. So <laughs> thank you very much for hosting our residents there too. And then lastly, but not least, of course, we have our EPPs. These are our programs that are preparing our students to become teachers. Um, our EPPs have been working really closely together as well to help make this possible for all uh, universities and colleges in Montana. Uh, with the residency program, it, since it is a full year of student teaching, our students will be taking their remaining classes online and not all colleges offer those classes online. So we're all working together right now to try to get as many online classes available so that this can become open to more and more students. Uh, there's also the Montana Course Exchange where classes are posted um, on there as well that we can utilize. Um, 
and yeah, we're just, we're working together to get online classes so that we can have this for everybody. I would like to shout out MSU. They're doing a lot of work right now to make sure that we can have our secondary ed uh, majors have their online classes available. And so they're doing fantastic work. Western, we already just kind of had a model of having a lot of online classes, but we've been continuing to develop that as well. So we can get this out for more students. All right, and last but not least, I have two QR codes up here on the screen for you. The QR code that's on the left will take you to a, a Microsoft form. If you fill out this form, it's just gonna ask you some general, like, who are you <laughs> questions, um, and just get, be able to get you in contact with me. Uh, so you'll just fill out, you'll tell me who you are, what your role is, what you're interested in with the program. And after you submit that, I'm going to send you an email to connect with you, either to help answer whatever questions it is that you have, or if you're a student would like to join the residency, this is how I can connect with you to get you to join on the residency as well. The other QR code on the right in the big red box will take you to the OPI's website for the residency. They have lots more um, uh, like uh, frequently asked questions pages on there. You can find the residency handbook. There's extra information. You can see where students have been placed in the past as well. There's testimonials. We got a lot of really good stuff that's all, reg uh, all regarding the residency that you can check out there as well. I'm gonna leave this screen up with these two QR codes here for just a few minutes in case people would like to utilize them. Uh, but I would like to open this up now for anybody that has questions. You're more than welcome to put them in the chat. Uh, and I will also try to say them out loud for everybody else that's not seeing them and also for our recording. Uh, you're also more than welcome to use, I think there's like a little like hand raise button. <laughs> and you're more than welcome to use that if you'd like rather just ask a question too. Kirsten, I think I have all of the questions that are currently in the chat um, answered um, besides for Ashes. So I want to answer that. Um, Ashes question is, how or when will we know which districts are willing to host residences here or next year? Um, it's kind of like twofold. So um, there's two ways about going two ways to go about partnering a district with a resident. Um, in the first year, we actually had a lot of districts that said we're interested, residents that said, I am i don't really care where I go. And so between the OPI and really uh, Montana Western and SD Aiken, like she drove residents out to different locations around the state who wanted to have a resident and said, here's what the housing will look like. Here's what the district looks like. Here's what the community looks like. So there's one way, right? That that on our end at the OPI, we're recruiting districts actively while Kirsten and her team are recruiting students. And then we work together to pair them. Um, but we saw a lot more in this current year that we had um, student, like for example, we had a student whose um, family lived in Great or in Columbia Falls. And so she wanted to do residency within the Flathead Valley. So I started reaching out to Columbia Falls. They didn't have a desire to be a part of residency. So then I reached out to Kalispell and Kalispell said, yes, we would love to be a part of residency. So if you have residents who know where they want to be placed, I on my end will work with districts within that area to see if we can find um, you know, district leaders who are interested in, in hosting a resident um, because maybe they haven't thought about that. But then also as our district list grows, I will continue to provide that for Kirsten so she can help spread that and say, these are districts that are currently interested in hosting a resident. Here's the housing um, that they can offer, whether it's mileage reimbursement, um, you know, a monthly stipend that they will provide you, or maybe they have district housing available. Um, and then we work to partner that way. So it really is kind of a back and forth process until we ensure that the district is satisfied, the resident is satisfied, and then we have that lead teacher who really is um, essential in making sure that our residents get the, the top-notch quality of instruction and support that they need. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to kind of go through too and just quick answer some of these questions that are in the chat just out loud for anybody that didn't need, uh, didn't see them yet either. Um, I had one person ask, is it, do you have to teach after the residency for two years or three years? Because uh, the video had said two, but when I was just telling you, I said three. <laughs> so when this was still funded through ESSER dollars, the uh, timeline for that was two years. It now will be three years moving forward with this 2024-2025 school year. Um, just as it's being funded through legislation. So it is three years now. Uh, your, oh, um, I had one that was asking whether or not the residents are teaching under the teacher leaders or if they'll be in their own classroom. 
Um, the teacher leaders are like a traditional student teacher. So they are in, a, in the classroom with a teacher leader and they will slowly take over the classroom like in the traditional student teaching model, um, eventually take over the whole whole the whole shenanigan <laughs> and then uh, give it back to the teacher leader as the end of the year comes around. Uh, what sort of housing assistance? This can it very, very broadly <laughs> change. It just depends on what it is that you need as the resident and what the district can offer. So we've had some districts uh, just give uh, like uh, gas reimbursements uh, for residents that already were able to be in that area. We've had some districts uh, provide actual housing. We had a district that just had um, I believe like an apartment that was there that they were able to use. Another district uh, got an Airbnb for the student that they had. It, it truly, there's another, there, there's also districts that just have like a monthly stipend that they will give their residents. It's a really, really broad range of what kind of housing assistance will happen. And like I said, that's something that is a, that was a, uh, that the resident and the district will decide together. And myself will be, I'll be there to help you and or Crystal will be there to help you when we, those decisions come around as well. Uh, Crystal answered our fantastic question about how we know what districts are available there. Again, you're just going to kind of tell us what area you would like to be placed in and then we can reach out to those schools. Um, bah, 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 let me see. It jumped on me. Kirsten, I think the next one is about how many, it's from Morgan. Um, how many credits does a resident need to have completed in order mm. to qualify? Um, and if we also can take classes alongside a residency. Perfect. Uh, really quickly, I saw one that was just right before it. somebody asked, what if we don't do QR codes? I did put in the in the chat right now. There's one that's from me that just says Microsoft form to talk to, to connect with me. The other one says OPI residency website. Those are linked. Both of those uh, links are in that uh, little chat there that I sent. Um, do do do. Oh my goodness. Sorry. Keep jumping on me again. Okay. Perfect. How many credits? That's right. <laughs> um, all righty. Uh, credits wise, you are able, so as far as how many credits you have to have completed, that will vary depending on what EPP it is that you're um, taking your classes at just because it is what, whatever the requirements are for your education program is going to be different across the board. However, what, what, what you need to have is you need to be in your final year of schooling so that you will either, you are eligible to either be student teaching in the fall or in the spring of like, for example, for this current school year, that will be, I'm sorry, not this current one, but the one that we'll be going into. Uh, so if you are eligible to student teach in fall of 2024 or spring of 2025, then you would be eligible for this program. You also, like I said before, you can take some of your classes that you have left over um, during the residency. Those would all need to be online classes, though. And there isn't a uh, the credit limit for how many classes you can take during the residency is also just whatever your credit limit that your college says that you that they, they have. Um, we advise to not take any more than three classes during the residency per semester. We just feel that it'd be a lot of work if you do more than that. But each student, to each student their own, some of you definitely could probably handle more stress of having to take more classes. And some of you might think that three is way too many, and that's totally fine. You just have to make sure that you're eligible for student teaching either in that fall or spring semester. Um, somebody asked if... The program was near Missoula. We haven't had people yet be placed near Missoula, but that doesn't mean that that can't happen. Crystal and I are working on trying to get more and more districts involved. Uh, so if you're somebody that would like to get placed over there, then that's where we can work on uh, finding a district for you that's in that area. Uh, I am going to stop sharing my screen as well at this point. Again, those two QR codes are about to just go away here, but the, both of those links are in the chat right now as well. Can I, can, this is Jamie from MSU. Hi, can I ask Gayla if possible, where, I have an FCS program um, through our Master of Arts in Teaching program here at MSU. And I'm wondering if Gayla is interested in hosting a, an FCS candidate um, and if so, where she's located. 
Jamie Gala works for the OPI. So she's our oh, SS. Yes. Uh, I was, no. was going to share that. I didn't want to speak <laughs> for you, Gayla. I just didn't know if you had a, a microphone. So yeah, it took me a while to unmute. I wish I could, but I, I'm very excited to see what I could do to help in that area or any CTE area, actually. Thank you. Thank you, Gayla. We have an um, awesome, I work, I work with Nicole and we have a ama an amazing new joint FCS um, Master of Arts in Teaching Initial Licensure Program. So I would love to promote this to all of our FCS folks. Okay, give, give me an email, Jamie. We can talk more. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> First one, I see a question from Anna. Um, we assess student teacher candidates during student teaching using our um, faculty vetted assessment tool. Um, if, if you want to speak to that, or I can, I can as well. Go ahead. Yeah, there. absolutely. Um, if you, uh, I'll actually, I'll let you answer this one because I think you might have a bit better, more knowledge on this than I do. <laughs> yeah, Anna. So our our practice um, in both year one and year two of the pilot is that um, the field placement coordinator. Um, and the EPP that the residents come from still follow that EPP's responsibilities and requirements for student teaching. So um, they would still follow the student teaching handbook. Obviously, the timeline changes when you move from a 12-week period to a full year long. Um, but as far as like the observations and the assessment tools and stuff like that, that is still coming from um, the EPP that that resident student is um, attached to. From the residency side of things, we're not... Um, we're not responsible for evaluating the quality of the resident, the lead teacher, um, the district. Like there's no evaluatory process when you look at that. Um, we simply are gathering data to report back, um, well, currently to the feds for the use of our ESSER dollars, but moving forward will be to report back to legislation. So any type of um, assessment tool that we use will simply be um, gathering feedback in order to improve and enhance the program. But the EPP is still responsible for assessing um, the student teaching candidates as they typically would in a traditional setting. Oh, this is Jamie again from MSU. I'll chime in and say as a non-UM Western um, EPP that's participating this year with three students, it's worked really well um, just to, to have our regular assessment tool that that we, we too have a faculty approved assessment tool and um, our own field placement um, rules and regulations and they've seamlessly uh, worked quite quite well with this program so plug for that thanks Jamie. appreciate that Hi. yep and gala when you um, asked a question about the year um, and what that means the resident teacher their student teaching year becomes modeled after the district's calendar year. So when those teachers um, arrive at school for maybe PIR days, a few days before the school year starts, setting up their classroom, whatever that might be, that's when the resident begins their residency. Um, when the school year ends, you know, you might have one or two PIR days, that resident teacher is still a part of the, the school employee calendar once they become a resident. I had another person also ask too, is the teacher leader program online or in person in the length? Um, I'm going to have Crystal kind of help me with this, but from what I understand, we have an orientation where the teacher leaders will be involved with that. And then we have three uh, professional developments during the school year, and those will all be virtual. I How long are each of those professional developments? Um, so that's a great question. And it is, it's really changed from year to year based on feedback from a resident. So year one was much more in person, um, both for the professional learning opportunities that we would provide for um, districts and lead teachers, but then also what we're calling learning labs, which is um, professional learning for those resident teachers. So um, last year they were all in person. Um, this year we've gone to more of a virtual setting. So um, we met for one or day and a half in Great Falls, which we de determined was the best centralized location for our residents this year. Um, lead teachers, residents met um, middle of August. The OPI paid for travel, food, meals, lodging for that gathering. Um, and then we had a learning lab in October, which was in Haver, so it was a day and a half. Again, OPI used ESSER dollars to fund the travel for um, residents for that learning opportunity. And since then, we've hosted them um, virtually. So we had a learning lab. Um, for our residents in 
January, um, our residents said that they would prefer two shorter days over a six day or a six hour one day session. So we did like two days um, over Christmas break, um, three hours each. And then we actually have another one coming up next week, which again will be held virtually. Um, we're doing four hours of a learning lab on a Thursday and then back um, that up with the online virtual job fair that is hosted by the OPI on March 8th. So they look a little bit different, um, but really trying to implement what's new and what's on the cutting edge of Montana education, which um, is driven by legislation, right? So um, we've talked a lot about technology. We've talked about personalization. We've talked about mathematical mindset. Um, so a lot of those things that we see as education initiatives in the state are what we're trying to help support our residents with, but then also our lead teachers. So we provided for our lead teachers um, a graduate profile seminar that happened, um, I believe, in November. We provided a family community um, an engagement session that happened in January. And then we have Joe Bowler from Stanford coming in with Mathematical Mindsets for a virtual session in April. So um, really trying to tie the support and the professionalism of, of teaching to those initiatives that are driving instruction um, through legislation. So they so long story short, they vary, um, but we try to host three or four a year throughout the year um, where we can again come together, check in on our residents, see how they're doing. Um, the online orient or the in-person orientation in, in August was super powerful, um, I felt, because we had everyone hearing the same message, residents, lead teachers, and really felt like a, a close-knit family. Um, when we came back together in October, just as residents, it was it was like a family reunion, right? Everyone got to see each other again, talk about their experiences, and it really builds that culture and um, community of, of growing together and learning from each other. Thank you. Um, I saw there's a question from Alyssa. You asked, do we have to take all of the required classes or are some of those covered using our experience hours? I do not know what you mean. <laughs> you would like to please unmute and explain uh, yeah. a little further. Yeah, so um, what I meant by that was kind of like, you know, for the teacher education program, there's certain classes you have to take each semester to fit the requirement um, to then be able to student teach. So like if I was able to do this program and start next fall, say I have four specific classes I have to take, would I need to take all of those or would one or two or however many, depending on the um, class, would those be like, um, I guess, I can't think of the word right now. My brain's foggy, but um, like, would they be kind of like comped essentially and my experience in the classroom would count for that class instead of having to take the class. I'm going to, this is Jamie from MSU. No. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I was going to okay. say, I don't believe so. It should though, the, like the, the residency is just student teaching. So it wouldn't be substitute. The only thing it's substituting for is traditional student teaching. So whatever classes that you have for your, uh, degree, like your degree requirements, whatever that is that you have to fulfill, mm -hmm. that, that stays the same. Okay. And then, um, so then kind of a follow-up for that, um, would we, I mean, for myself, I'm using my GI Bill to pay for my schooling. So I would continue like payment plans through the college the same way, or like other students that are using scholarships or loans would do it the same way to pay for their college courses. I'm sorry, say say your question one more time for me. Um, so like for however we pay for our college courses that we're in, um, we would still be doing that the same way, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna mention too, so with the the tuition scholarship that's eligible for students uh in the residency program, how that works is it's a last dollar in scholarship. So if you are already getting other scholarships that can cover your tuition, or if you have a grant that's covering tuition, um, then you wouldn't be eligible for the scholarship. But if you still have money left over as a tuition balance, um, after like your grants are applied, or if you don't have any, if you just have a tuition balance, then whatever your tuition balance is up to $3,000, you'll get that as a tuition scholarship. Okay, perfect. Um, and then um, another question. So I'm in Kalispell um, and I was with a teacher last semester and she told me she's a master teacher, which I didn't really know what that meant until now. Um, 
But if she is like a certified, you know, like master teacher, would I be able to request to do it under her um, in that school or would we have to just go through the district? Uh, so we will we'll, so similarly to if you wanted to go anywhere, you're going to tell uh, myself where it is that you would like to be placed. So in this for this example, let's uh, if you wanted to be placed in that particular school with that particular teacher, you'll just tell me that. And then Crystal and I can reach out then to that district and see if they're willing okay. to host you. And then we have you go under that teacher if they're a master teacher too. And if they agree to it, which it sounds like it sounds like they probably would as well if you already have this connection with them. Um, so okay. most likely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I can kind of add to okay. that. So the lead teacher is really, um, I guess, approved or identified by the district. Um, but knowing that you already have a connection, that, that makes it a little bit easier, right? So like as Kirsten said, if you let us know like, obviously said what district, but what school in Kalispell that would be, who the teacher would be, I can then reach out to um, their assistant superintendents who we've worked with to get the other students placed in Kalispell this year and say, this is someone who would like to work with this teacher they're interested in as well. And then we allow the district to really make the connection between what school and teacher will host a resident. So, uh, but knowing that you have a connection, that's that's a great step forward to to make that come to fruition. Okay, and um, then I have one more question, which you might not have an answer for, which is fine. It's kind of a random um, mom question. Um, so I have a toddler, and then I'll have an infant um, soon. So for, like, sick days as a resident teacher, like, how would that work? Because I know, um, you know, obviously being paid and you want to have your time, it's a little different than missing a college class for a day because your kid is sick. So how do, how would that kind of work? We, the soft guidelines that we give is that you would follow the school district handbook for an employee um, because they are financially contributing to your, your experience. So um, we, there's no like, you know, solid deadline. You can only miss three days, right? Or you can, you've got five weeks, obviously taking a maternity leave probably wouldn't be ideal for this, this model um, because you're missing being in the classroom, but um you know, there, there is some flexibility for, you know, having to be gone, having to be sick. And it might even be, you know, as Kirsten had mentioned, like we have like the 90 or sorry, the 80, 20 split, right? So 80% of your um, week should be in the classroom, 20 week, 20% 20 could be out. Maybe if you're, you know, have to take a sick day or whatever, that might count as your 20% out of the classroom. Okay. Um, that would be, okay. you know, can, can be used to do whatever doctor's appointments, um, you know, being sick, doing coursework, whatever you deem you want to do with that 20% is truly up to the resident, but it's, um, you know, that split is really, um, created to help support the, the coursework that you would still be doing online to complete your, um, your program. Perfect. That is all I need to know. Cause, um, yeah, my daughter's due in April, so I'm not, I won't be taking maternity okay. leave or anything, but I just, you know, having two kids, they get sick. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's good well, congratulations. And yes, I, I've got a four-year-old. I know all about being sick all winter long. So yes. yeah, it's very good. <laughs> um, I see a question in the chat about a deadline for districts to um, identify that they're interested. We don't have a hard deadline, um, but the sooner the districts say, yes, we're interested, the um quicker we can begin placing residents. So if you're a district that really wants to, um, you know, host a resident and, and you're really excited about this opportunity, um, I would ask for you to fill out that questionnaire. That the um, Google form by no means like holds you strong and hard to like having a resident, but it at least helps us get the ball rolling as far as finding placement. So you're not committing to anything. It's just um, that, yes, this is, this is something you're interested in and we can, we can help work with finding residents for that. I saw a couple people in the chat as well ask if there was a one pager that they could share with other share with other people. Um, I do <laughs> totally have one. Uh, if you could give me an email, uh, then I am more than happy to share. I have a bunch of promotional things actually that I'm more than happy to share with you so you can spread the word around as well. Uh, my email is kirsten.minick at umwestern.edu. Again, it's also posted in the chat. Uh, but yeah, if you want to just send me an email, I'm more than happy to share all of the different tools that I have with you too. That's perfect. Chris and I see that they're both OPI folks, so I will make sure they get your one pager. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> all right. 
Um, those are the end of the questions that we had in the chat. If anybody else has any questions that they'd like to ask right now, that's um, I'd love to answer them. But otherwise, this has been a fantastic open house, and I'm really glad that you all were able to join me tonight. Thank you so much for taking your time to be here. I saw one about um, the recording being posted. We'll make sure this recording gets posted on the OPI website. Um, and then, Kirsten, I'll let you talk as far as the EPP side if there's somewhere that you might be posting this recording. Um, hopefully we will. I don't have an answer for that right now, though. <laughs> so uh, for sure it'll be on the OPI side, though. <laughs> yep. The OPI site can be hard to navigate at times. So if you just search um, at the homepage residency, it's the first thing that pops up. That's how I find the residency page on the OPI website. So. If you just Google Montana teacher residency or probably even just residency program, it also, I notice it's been like the first pop up as well. It hasn't been, finding the website hasn't been too hard <laughs> actually so far. Wonderful. All right. It looks like I don't see other people asking questions. Again, thank you guys all once more for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, please contact me if you have any other questions or if you'd like to learn more and join. Um, otherwise, I will talk to you all later.